so we're about to enter this incredible new era in observational cosmology. Um, we're very lucky because the powers that be have decided to fund all these surveys. The Euclid satellite will be launched and will make ma maps of galaxies. The Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, LSST, is this huge um, telescope being built in Atacama will I've, I've heard the description will will be it will take pictures of the whole universe on a regular on a regularly every six months. The square kilometer array will videotape the universe, um, and we're talking about making better measurements of the cosmic microwave background using combination of ground-based and satellite missions. So the data is going to go up phenomenally. It's going to improve phenomenally, and one of the goals is to understand the physics of inflation. So. What's going to happen? You know, how is the Encyclopedia Inflationaris going to change over the next 10, 15 years? So, I think there are two main directions. Uh, so, the, the first one, which I think is very important, is that uh, there is a prediction of inflation that has not yet been checked, namely the presence of uh, primordial gravity waves. So uh, these gravity waves are not the gravity waves that have been uh, detected uh, recently by by LIGO. So because th those gravity waves were produced by the collision of two black holes. Here we are talking about gravity waves that are produced in the early universe. So these are completely different uh, type of gravity waves. But if we could measure those gravity waves, really I think we well, first of all, we would check another predictions of inflation. So this would be conceptually, I think, very important. But also we could learn a lot about inflation. So for instance, the amplitude of those gravity, sh of those gravity waves is directly related to the energy scale of inflation. So if we can measure the gravity waves, immediately this will tell us at which energy scale inflation occurred in the early universe. So this is one direction. Another direction, which is maybe more related to the surveys that you mentioned before, is non-Gaussianity. What does that mean? So non-Gaussianity, so we talked about the power spectrum, which is the two-point correlation function. But of course, uh, once we are given fluctuations, we describe them in terms of correlation function, but not necessarily only in terms of the two-point correlation function. We can al also calculate the three-point correlation function, the four-point correlation function, and so on. So non-Gaussianity, uh, so if the fluctuations are Gaussian, then from the knowledge of the two-point correlation function, you can infer the value of all the other correlation functions. But if the fluctuations are not Gaussian, then really a measurement of the three-point correlation function would really give us new information. And so non-Gaussianity is the attempt to, uh, to measure a deviation from Gaussianity by measuring the value of the three and four point mm -hmm. correlation function. And so the models uh, that we have discussed, they all predict a very tiny amount of non-Gaussianity. Uh, so tiny that probably will be very hard to measure it uh, maybe in our lifetime. Yes. Yes. But after all, maybe we, maybe we have to deal with a more complicated model of inflation. Mm. And so there is a range between the current constraints that we have on non-Gaussianity and the level of non-Gaussianity that is predicted by those models. Mm. And maybe we have to deal with a slightly more complicated model of inflation that predict a level of non-Gaussianity which is in between. Mm. So this is the reason why I still it's still very important to go and hunt for this uh, non-Gaussianity. Non and if we don't find anything, this is also a way to rule out other models of inflation mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. we cannot rule out using the constraints that we have on non-Gaussianity nowadays. Mm -hmm. So the, the two directions are gravity waves and non-Gaussianity. So gravity waves, gravity waves you say are a prediction of inflation. What if we didn't measure any gravity waves? Does that mean we would rule out inflation? Unfortunately, no. Mm. Uh, we will be able to rule out many models of inflation, but unfortunately, 
there are models of inflation that predict a level of gravity wave that is so small that even the next generation of experiment won't be able to see them. Right, so it's, it's not a, a unique prediction of inflation. So I think the presence of gravity wave is a unique prediction of inflation. Mm. But the presence of a gravity wave at a level that can be realistically detected is not a unique right. prediction of inflation. Okay. So this, I mean, leads me to a, a final question, which is, what would it take for you to, to <laughs> give up on inflation? Um, so it's a tough question, indeed, <laughs> and I have no, I have no objective answer to that question. I only have a subjective uh, answer to that question, and I would say that if we see non-Goshanities, I would not give up on inflation. If we see non-adiabatic perturbation, I would not give up on inflation, simply because these two things are predictions of multi-field inflation. Mm -hmm. And I believe that multi-field inflation scenarios are very reasonable scenarios mm -hmm. of inflation. Maybe I would give up on inflation if you tell me that the spectral index of the gravity waves is not red. Mm. What does that mean, not red? So red means that you have uh, more power on small scale than on large scales. Right. So this means that the tilt that we mentioned before is less than one. There are models of inflation that can do it. Yes. I agree. So this is the reason why it's not an objective answer. But to my test, these models are a bit too complicated, I would say. Right. And so it's totally subjective, I fully agree. But mm. if you find a spectral index of the tensor that is not less than one, mm -hmm. uh, well, less than zero in this parameter. Yes, measure. yes. Uh, I think I would I would start working more on the alternatives to inflation. Okay, we'll hold you to that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you.